Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back again. Uh, so I've been talking about my five best fits in free agency for players like George Springer, JT Real Muto, um, you know, DJ LeMahieu, and who else have I talked about? Trevor, ba Trevor Bauer, and, and 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 some other places. Actually, I will be talking about Trevor Bauer. And then I talked about my five, you know, five ideal trade scenarios for certain certain players. The best trade packages for Nolan Arenado, Francisco Lindor, and some other players too. Um, today I'm going to continue on that mode and go over my five bets, best uh, fits in free agency for Kyle Schwarber, who I did not expect to become a free agent. I really did not expect uh, Chicago to non-tender him a contract, but they did. And I thought they were going to trade him and get something for him because they are open for business, and I still see them trading a couple of their pieces while I think at the same time trying to not do a full rebuild. But it's, I, I think it's going to be kind of hard to not do, particularly if their mandate is to cut payroll. Um, I think they might as well just go on a teardown and, and, and get a boatload of capital back, particularly since their farm system right now, specifically on the pitching side, uh, is just completely gutted. They can get a boatload for some of their players. Chris Bryant, Javi Baez, Kyle Kendricks, like Darvish. Um, if you're going to do it, you might as well go all the way. That's just my opinion, but... That still remains to be seen as to what they're going to do, but they, they have decided that everybody's open for business and they want to cut payroll. So um, Kyle Schwarber, unfortunately, became the first casualty. And uh, I, where are my, five, my top five fits for him? Some of them might be uh, ones that you don't think of, but um, <clears throat> I think they could be a good fit, particularly with his skill set, a little bit more of a patient hitter, left-handed bats. A lot, there's a lot of teams who need a lefty, uh, a lefty hitter. And... Um, we really don't know yet whether the National League is going to permanently adopt the DH. I think that's going to be discussed in the next collective bargaining agreement at the end of the season um, or soon in 2021. Um, and that that can change the game too because a lot of players who were kind of meddling outfielders who should be DH will now have the opportunity to be DH if that happens, which opens up a position in the field for younger prospects and so on and so forth. It gives teams more flexibility. Um so with that said, number five team to me is the Kansas City Royals. I don't think anybody's probably thinking about Kansas City Royals, but I also had a fit. I had a good. I had them as a fit for George Springer. Um, could you imagine if they brought in Springer and Schwarber? They've already said, and so they brought in Mike Miner. They've added a boost to their pitching uh, rotation. They brought in Michael Taylor, uh, an outfielder, veteran outfielder. So they're making incremental moves already. And Dayton Moore said that they're going to do what's necessary to win again and be competitive. They don't have a lot of uh, salary tied up. So and Alex Gordon just retired, so that money's freed up as well. So, could you imagine if they brought in Springer and Schwarber? I mean, that would change their whole their whole lineup. It really, really would, and make them a hell of a lot more competitive. Even though they're in the same division with the White Sox, the Indians, the Twins, who are uber competitive teams, this would change things. But um, I have them being a great fit for Schwarber because imagine you know you add him to Soler, you add him to Whit Merrifield, and he can play a spot, you know, mostly DH in my opinion, but he could do a, a spot play out in left field where Alex Gordon is no longer playing. Um, you know, so he offers that flexibility to the team for multiple position there too, um, but in a way so that he can preserve his body and stay just batting at the plate. Um, but I think that lefty bit bat would play much better uh, in Kansas City rather than him roaming out in the uh, in that big outfield. Playing left field, so I I think he'd be more of a DH than he would be an outfielder, but he's still a I think he's a good fit there. He'd be surprisingly good. Um, number five, number four is the Atlanta Braves. You know, with, with the loss of Ozuna, they have a need for an outfielder. They have oh, they also have a young, dynamic team with a lot of these young stud players and some positional f uh, flexibility. And again, if the National League adopts a, a DH, um, you know you can have him, you can slide him over there at some point. Um, and but that bat, you add him to Acuna and and Freddie Freeman and Albiez and, and like this whole crew, Swanson. You add that bat, and it's, it takes that offense up to a whole other level too. Particularly if he stays healthy, and he's you know he's got he's become a more patient hitter, and it gives them a, a little bit of a lefty balance to complement Freddie Freeman in that lineup. Um, you know, he could play you know play a spot left field every now and then, but he could also you know maybe play first base, give Freddie Freeman a day to DH. If the DH becomes available, you give him a break too, or just a day off. Um, so there's a lot of things. Uh, I think a lot of flexibility that he offers. And I think any team that gets him, they'll obviously be getting a good player. I mean, the high, the strikeouts level, the strikeouts need to come down a little bit, but they're still going to get a potential 25, 30 home run guy um, and uh, some clutch hitting too. So 
I'd sign up for that. And I don't think anybody's going to have to give him $100 million. Um, so I think he's a good fit in Atlanta. Number three, Minnesota. Add him to that lineup, too, with Donaldson. And he could eventually – we don't know if Nelson Cruz is going to come back yet. I think he will probably for one more year. But he could replace Nelson Cruz after this year or this year as DH, too. Or, you know, you, you play him somewhere now um, <clears throat> for a year and then bump him over to DH when Nelson Cruz, Cruz retires. Uh, but adding him to that lineup with those with all those young hitters and veterans um, and, again, giving him a solid lefty hitter and some more flexibility, more patience in that lineup, a good solid veteran, good clubhouse guy. You know, he, he's just a good all-around player and a person, good high-character guy. Um, I think he would do a lot of good for that team and uh, would make that lineup even more fearsome too. And it's just that lineup is hard to get around. It really, really is when they're clicking on all cylinders. You add a Kyle Schwarber to that, and it's 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 a whole nother ball game. I, I, I see it as a good fit. I really, really do. Um, number two... The Los Angeles Angels, I see him as another good fit there. I mean, they don't really have a, a – after this year, I, I mean, Albert Pujols – this is Albert Pujols' last season. So imagine putting, you know, Schwarber rotating him at DH and outfield or something like that, and then after Albert Pujols retires, he moves over to first base. So it's straight – so he's not having to run around the outfield where he's probably a little bit stronger defensively at first base than he would the outfield. So – and again, um, he you add him to that lineup. Can you imagine Schwarber and Pujols and Trout and Otani and, yeah, and <laughs> Rendon? Uh, and if Joe Adele gets a little bit more seasoning and, and kind of delivers on his potential, that's a modern-day murderer's row. It really is. I mean, that, that lineup would be crazy. And even though Pujols is 40-something years old, he's still hitting the ball. Um, you know, he's still still a pretty decent hitter. So he's definitely a first ballot Hall of Famer. But uh, I think he sure would be another good fit. And, you know, even if he did, could you imagine just you know Trout batting second, uh, or or something like that, and Schwarber, and then Rendon, and then Otani, and then and then Adele or whatever. Does just have lefty righty, lefty right? It's just that's a death march for a lot of pitchers. Um, I see him being a really really good fit for that lineup, and uh, he would give it so much firepower that. Um, they would be. They would. They would definitely be putting themselves in a position to compete with Oakland, and Houston. Um, they'd be a heck of a lot of better team. Obviously, starting pitching is their or should be their main focus. But if they have an opportunity to bring in somebody like a Kyle Schwarber, you know, on a reasonable contract, why would they not do it? Artie Moreno <clears throat> has not been afraid to spend. Um, and you have Pujols big contract coming off the books after 2021. Um, so he seems like a logical fit to me, Kyle Schwarber, and, and, and a change of scenery too for him, um, where maybe a little bit less pressure, but he'd be a very, 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 very welcome addition to that team. And I can see him just looking sharp in that Angels, hitting bombs in that Angels outfit, and uh, yeah, be a good fit. And the number one fit to me is the Toronto Blue Jays. Actually, young, dynamic lineup, but they're they're missing a like a full time DH. Um, you know, he can play some outfield too, but you plug him in a DH so that he doesn't have to roam around the field because he has shown some defensive vulnerability in the outfield. Well, he doesn't have to deal with that here, especially in Toronto when the ball, if it carries, it, it, it keeps going. So if you hit a, a gap or it is, the ball just moves on the AstroTurf a lot more aggressively than it does on the grass. So you plug him in there at DH and you add him to Guerrero and Biggio and, and Bichette and all these other, <laughs> all these other young hitters. Oh my goodness. And again, he's a good veteran. He's a good clubhouse guy. I think he could mentor some of these young kids, bring a lot to that offense, bring, just bring a lot to the team. And he would balance out a heavily left, heavily righty uh, lineup with, with another lefty bat who's shown to be a, a more patient hitter than before. And he's shown you know the ability to drive in runs, get a high OPS, and do the, do the little things and do the big things. So Toronto Blue Jays to me seem... Like the like the um, the most ideal fit. I mean, I could say other teams too. I could say Yankees. I could say Mets. But like, you know, I want to be realistic here. Can he fit on some of those teams? Sure, but th th there would be roadblocks. You'd have teams that have to make like two or three moves just to bring him on, just for it to make sense. Whereas he makes sense for these teams pretty much right now. And that's kind of the difference. And that's the same thing goes for George Springer. He made sense for these teams right now. So. Um, 
But that's why, you know, the teams, some of them might not be the sexy names, but who cares? He can make any of these teams better. Any of them. And he would. So those are my top five fits for Kyle Schwarber. And uh, let me know what you think. Leave your feedback in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification so you don't miss what I'm going to be bringing out moving forward. I got some good stuff coming. So uh, keep an eye out. Be safe. Look out for each other. And I'll talk to you next time.